my kings and queens it is your sister queen sin of men and it is the full shades of summer tonight ladies and gentlemen i have a very 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 special guest he is a master fetish trainer an erotic masseuse philosopher business owner king shall i go on Okay. I don't know. It, so it sounds good when it's you talk about it. It sounds good. All right. King Noor. Yeah, see, I don't like round of applause. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very Snaps much. Snaps and all that good stuff. <laughs> and, of course, I have to introduce the man with the plan behind the brand. Yes, I stole that from you, Vanessa. Um, the man who sometimes tells the truth. <laughs> <laughs> another blessed day, another blessed day. Mm -hmm. I had to look, I didn't even ask you how are you, like another blessed day. I'm like, I'm can you just get, say hello sometimes? I'm ready to get this one started. You're oh, here, right? geez, Louise. God, okay. Yeah, enough. I'm like, I think he's going to have more questions than, than any other ladies, probably. But anywho, so, kicking it off, kicking it off. I'm like, please tell us a little bit about you and what all you want everyone to know, even though I've given the rundown. <laughs> Well, first and foremost, uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. It's, it's always good to, to be someplace in Jersey and, and be able to build and talk with folks. So Absolutely. I'm glad, I'm glad to be home for this. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do, my name is King Noir. I am half of the company's Jet Setting Jasmine, Royal Fetish Films, and Body Altitudes Health and Fitness. I'm also an MC, activist, uh, I like the philosopher. I, I, I'll say that as well. All know. right. Uh, Royal <laughs> Fetish Films is a black-owned, basically, porn company. But right. we focus on kink, fetish, passionate, hardcore films. All right. Because our people are not depicted in our full light. We're not shown as full sexual beings. We're usually fetishized instead of mm -hmm. engaging in a fetish. Mm. So that's what led me and my partner, Jet Setting Jasmine, to start Royal Fetish Films uh, in, what was it, 2015? Uh, okay, so it's fairly like, like very new. new. Okay. And in 2016, we, we won Best Full Length Feature at the Fetcon Fetish Awards for College in the Shadows. So, you know, it's it's been picking up and awesome. people have enjoyed it so far. Jet Setting Jasmine is a company where we travel the globe delivering fetish parties where we're re reimagining what a bachelorette, a ladies night, a couples night or a bachelor party can be. All right. That's awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. So has the I mean from launching the business in 2015 till now, did it just kind of like skyrocket or well, we've had Jet Setting Jazz. Jet Setting Jasmine LLC has been around, uh, I'm trying to think of when it started. I think it was 2011 or 2012. Jasmine started it before we were working together. Okay. And we met each other and figured out what a fantasy flight party looks like together mm -hmm. and started pushing it in that direction. I have been involved in, in porn and adult entertainment for a while beforehand. Oh, okay. But owning my own and producing, directing, mm -hmm. and, and all that good stuff just from 2015, and it, and it has caught on well and is, is growing, and hopefully we're, we're, we're there, along with a bunch of other producers and talent and directors, hopefully changing the face of what mm -hmm. beautiful black people can do on yes, film, you know? Yes, yes, indeed. Because, I mean, I'm definitely one of those sisters who would love to see some of our men on film or oh, actually us together because there's a lot of us on film but we're usually separate not together so Very true. i'm like but shout out to sister queen jasmine i'm like thank you sister we appreciate you as well um so how did you guys meet like how, how did this conversation go like this is what you do this is what i do uh i was on a radio show that she 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 used to host a radio show 
um, called The Emotion Picture, along with bro Brothers Victorious and Shot Stimuli. Okay. And they did a show called, I think it was like Behind the Scenes of Porn. And okay. And they had me and Cinnamon Love on. And they were interviewing us about what it's like to have relationships when you're in adult entertainment. Mm, okay. So at around the same time, Jasmine had started doing her own parties through one of those companies that people usually do bachelorette parties through. Mm -hmm. right? And she was looking to expand and, and add new things. Okay. So she thought that, you know, what I do with the erotic touch massage would be a great addition to her parties. Okay, so you already had your erotic touch massage yes. I started, business going. I started the company Sensual Noir in, I believe, 2011. Okay. And that got started because I was dancing at parties. Okay. But I wanted to add a, a, a different kind of element because... There's only but so many times, you know, a lap dance takes you to a certain place. Sure. So sure, I wanted okay. to add another element. I would, and even when I would do lap dances, I would use my hands and wouldn't be like, oh, you have really good hands. I, okay. I bet you could do a good massage. So the erotic touch massages are like a mix between a lap dance and a massage. And then we add fetish and kink and toys and foods and all kinds of different things Ooh. so it's kind of like huh. living a fantasy on a massage table i'm excited <laughs> i'm like living a massage mm, mm. okay all right so you already had your erotic touch massage business already going and mm -hmm. then you just incorporate so where did the porn come into well i started doing porn when i was legally able to do so oh okay so i've been i've been involved initially i got started in adult entertainment by doing web broadcasting, being on different websites. Uh, a friend of mine, she was a dancer mm -hmm. and they wanted her to be in a magazine. And she was like, I don't, I, I want to be in a magazine, but I don't want to be in it with somebody random that I don't know. Mm -hmm. So she was like, Haas, I know you into it. <laughs> come, come, on. come come, do the shoot with me. And okay. that was my first introduction to it. And then from there, I used to get hired to do like private shows mm -hmm. and, and things like that before I was ever on film. So it all kind of... I was about to say, I I was gonna held, say like, how does one get to that level? Do most people start out like as dancing or massage? Every, I think it's kind of like rap in the sense of, you know, like 50 got on from mixtapes, Eminem got on from battling or uh -huh. somebody else. You know, like you get <laughs> discovered in so many different ways. I, okay. think, I think porn is very similar because especially now with, with computers, mm -hmm. it's kind of oh, leveled so the playing field okay. for everybody. So some people, they might, uh, right now, a lot of females are getting discovered through webcamming mm -hmm. because if you can pull in that fan base by yourself, just being in your room on a webcam, That's true. then they're going to love to see you with a full production on on a DVD, you know? So I think that's kind of like where they're pulling talent from now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very similar to music because now it's kind of like right. a lot of cats get SoundCloud, on off of their SoundCloud, right. or, uh -huh. you know? So then you also have people get discovered through dancing or I don't know, I guess the that, that age old, like, I went to Hollywood because I wanted to be a serious <laughs> actor. Oh, okay. That's like well, number, number five. You know, that, that, hap that happens to people too. You know, I think, uh -huh. um, I don't know, it's, it's really interesting being in this business because you get to meet so many different people from so many walks of life. Uh -huh. But the thing that binds most of you together is that you have a passion for sex. Okay, that's what I was going to say. I'm like, what is the mind of someone in like, the sex and more or less the porn business mm -hmm. like what is your mindset i mean are you usually like a free spirit as far as sex is concerned because some people that i know is like no i wasn't really that way but it helped me to open up so it's mm -hmm. like what is the mindset that you have to have like going in that's a good question I, I definitely know some people who are in it specifically because it was a business they knew they would succeed okay you know so you you get people i think a lot of times people don't they think, oh, this person has sex on camera, so right. they must not have any brain whatsoever. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. a lot of the people that I know in the industry are some of the smartest business people I've you will ever that. meet. I mean, it's the same thing. Like, you know, brothers that are hustlers or whatever are amazing mm -hmm. mathematicians, and some of them probably should be scientists. That's true. You know, so it's like, same kind of thing. I mean, what's his name? Two Chains? I think they said he had a 4.0 GPA. There you go. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like, let's put all the stereotypes, you know, to the side. Sometimes, so. sometimes it's circumstances. Sometimes it's just, 
the options that somebody has that leads them to, to different types of hustles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think with adult entertainment, some people you'll get are just complete exhibitionists. Mm, right. You okay. know, and they love to be watched. Like I myself, I'm an exhibitionist. I love to be watched. Okay. But I'm also a businessman. So to be able to bring the two together, yeah. work well for me. Okay. You know, I think that to, to have the mentality, you have to have the mentality, you definitely have to have the mentality like, I know that once this is out there, uh -huh. there's no turning there's no back. That's what I was about to say. You what know? is, like, if there has to be, like, all of these little things you have to put to the back in order for you to say, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to express myself, and I want the world to see me express myself, because it is an expression. Absolutely. You know, it's one of the greatest expressions as far as I'm concerned, but... Um, you know, I, I look at um, the art of making love. You mm -hmm. know, it's an art form. Absolutely, sex is an art form, Absolutely. regardless of how some people usually say. I, I don't know. We're we're able to curse on your show. Yes, yeah. Uh, so people will be like, "There's a difference between sex fucking and love making." Right, right. People and whereas will break there it up. might be a difference between those three and how you feel for somebody, mm -hmm. it doesn't change the fact that you should be doing whichever one that you're doing with some kind of artistic measure. True, to it, right? I love that. So I love that. So I think. We're at a place now where people are a little bit less judgmental in society, in certain pockets. In, right. certain, in other pockets, they've gone more judgmental. Yeah, they, but right, left usually those told. people who are extra judgmental are the biggest purchasers of my films. But <laughs> <laughs> I probably can agree with that. Absolutely. They probably have a bigger porn stash than everybody right, in this room. Right, exactly. Like they got Mike, Mike Pence's porn stash is probably real crazy. Really? <laughs> Probably real crazy. He probably got that automatic door. You got to press a button and the bookcase flips around and it's a he whole other world. got the whole Bruce Wayne situation going on. <laughs> right. Okay. But I, but I think that the mentality that you know, like, and, and I think it's the same thing with everything now, because no matter what you do in this world, someone's pulling out a camera phone. That's true. You, you can't even sneeze without somebody having you on World Star. You know yeah, what I mean? That's so if you true. bust your ass, somebody's gonna gonna film it, record it, or mm -hmm. whatever. So it's kind of like, all right, well, if in regards to porn, that there's there's this stigma though, mm. where they're like, well, if you wanted to act and then you do porn, you can't get real acting gigs. But that has actually started to Changing. get changed a lot um, with uh, Sasha Gray. Sasha Gray was in uh, Entourage. Okay. And she rocked on that show for a while, mm -hmm. and and I think there's there's a couple other people who have kind of made like a like a crossover into mainstream, even if it's not full on acting. Like mm -hmm. you see, Ron Jeremy was on like. A reality right, show. Right, yeah, he was on a reality show. And he's like a household name now. Right. So people don't have that same kind of stigma no. as much with porn as yeah, they used to. Yeah, he's more like to. a funny guy kind of sort of now. Yeah, and you know, yeah. one day if I want to run for office or whatever, you know, I'll right. just be like, look, I did all these porn movies. Y'all can find them on my website. Now mm -hmm. let's get down to business. I think that it should be that way with people. Like, if you have dreams that include porn or are beyond porn, just know that you're comfortable with that decision mm -hmm. moving forward, no mm -hmm. matter what it is you're gonna do. Okay, I'm like, that's, that's pretty good. I'm like, do we have any questions, anything in, in the chat? Or do you wanna throw a question in there? Cause I know you can <coughs> answer. Oh God, don't let him clear his throat. <laughs> um, we have Jabari, shout out to Jabari. Hello, Barry. Uh, he does ask a couple of questions. Uh, actually, he added another one. Um, so what applications need to be filled out uh, for the company? So the uh, unemployed or so those who uh, that seek new employment uh, may get started. Uh, is this what many may call good employment? Uh, he also goes on to say our people need to know that it is safe business uh, to get involved in yeah. um, as far as the industry. And he does ask a question. Is it safe? Uh, are there consistent uh, medical exams? That's a good question. That is a very good question. Mm -hmm. I probably have been tested more within the last two months than most people are tested wow. in an entire year. Wow. Uh, in order to shoot, most companies require a 14-day test, and that's like a full blood panel and everything like mm -hmm. that. There's a really, really great uh, facility. It's called Talent Testing Services. They have offices in Vegas, Los Angeles, and, you know, they have other places, and Miami, excuse me, mm -hmm. and they have... They work with uh, different medical centers throughout the country mm -hmm. to where you go there, you get your blood tested, they send it into them, and usually they get it back for you either within the day or- Oh, wow, speedy. Yeah, or a day speedy of. Speed turnaround. Absolutely. Okay. Um, that's very important for, who, the brother's name was Jabari. Mm -hmm. yes. So 
Definitely make sure that anything that you do, anyone you're involved with, anybody that you shoot with has a recent test and you want that test to be from, it's talent testing and there's another company that's pretty respected within the industry. Okay. But you don't want to just take somebody's random blood test that you, okay, know, you, you want to work with, <laughs> with uh, like talent testing, for example, it creates a database. Oh. So within that database, if somebody if tests positive, they keep the person's name anonymous. It's not like everybody's like, yo, this person got mm -hmm. chlamydia or something right. like that. But mm -hmm. they then shut down industry testing, have that person in the company's contact who that person has shot with mm -hmm. to, then let, to then have those people automatically tested. Because, you know, the, it, yeah, it is, awesome, there is a certain talent pool. Mm -hmm. So like, a bad wave or a bad shot wave can yeah, send, can send everybody exactly. out. Everyone's so, on sick leave. You know, that's very important. Uh, yeah. The form that you want to have signed if you're shooting your own content is a 2257. A 2257 basically says that this person is of age, this person is legally and willingfully engaging in uh -huh. any of these kind of acts. You also have to make sure whatever state that you're filming in isn't going to kick down your door when they find out you shot porn there, you know? So it is illegal to shoot porn in pretty much every state in the United really? States. Really? Yes. I did not know that. Um, wow. So you have to, you have to make sure that you know what you're doing, do as much research as possible on it. Um, make sure you check out the companies that you work for. Like there are certain companies I will not work for because they have racist content or I know that they have been, uh, shameful or abusive to females who work or women who work with them mm -hmm. or sometimes males who work with them as well yeah. you know so you want to be very careful because just like with any just what any kind of business there's good there's bad mm -hmm. unfortunately we live in a time where there is uh, one of the problems that we have in society is human trafficking right so you do have certain underground companies who do work within human trafficking. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important to do every, do your due diligence and study every single company that you could possibly work with. Make sure you check out the performers. Like we have definitely had certain performers that we've had to excommunicate because they might've said some wild, crazy racist or sexist or wow. homophobic thing or something that, mm -hmm. that we don't support. So that's that's very important to make sure you study and that and that goes with anything right i was about to say you could you could get a job as a you know as a marketing person mm -hmm. or you want to you know hating the company <laughs> hating the company and having to sell malt liquor to your people <laughs> so you know it could, it could go wrong in just about you any business malt liquor to your people. <laughs> okay so for you though was it pretty simple did you find that you've ran into a lot of these obstacles or i i okay. actually have gone through some very upsetting situations within right. within the industry. Um, I was with, I was shooting with a company. Uh, I'll give you two examples. One company is actually based here in New Jersey. Their name is Asylum, and they spell it with two S's. A S S Asylum. Okay. They it, they make it seem as if it takes place in a mental institution. Mm -hmm. So within that mental institution, the women are patients, and then the doctors and uh, orderlies kind of have their way with the women. Mm -hmm. It's all fetish stuff. Everybody there wants to be there, and that's right. fine. Okay. So I was going to be the first black man that they ever had on their site. Oh, boy. Okay. Personally, I think Dr. Noir sounds sexy as fuck. Yeah. Right? Listen. I think that that's You're a... You're getting no argument I think me. Dr. Noir is a very good name. Yes. They didn't think so. They thought Janitor Noir... Oh! Was <laughs> was what I should be doing, and and it's janitor. They've never had a janitor wow. on their site before, and wow. they've also never had a black man on their site before. Mm. So I speak to my I speak to my agent, and I'm like, I'm not playing a janitor. And it's funny because I found out the day before because I just happened to be on Twitter and see the stuff that they're buying for the shoot, and I'm like, hmm, that looks like that, that, look like, <laughs> that looks like that just looks came. like all the equipment for a janitor. <laughs> So I had them check out what they wanted me to do, and that's mm -hmm. what they said. And first of all, when you think about the world and the fantasy and all that, mm -hmm. if the sex is the treatment for the patient, then the doctor and the patient, that's sexy. Right, that's right? sexy. But, but a janitor coming to sweep up <laughs> and doing <laughs> something to a patient who's not there, that's, that's like borderline first unsanitary and borderline rape right. in, in that kind of context. Well, that is true, you yeah. know? So 
that also was disturbing for me yeah. you know so and and that's also you know people everybody likes different things there are simulations of rape that some people are turned on by mm -hmm. and some women like so that and i'm not knocking anybody for that right what i what i my problem was though you're not gonna make you're not gonna make me the first janitor right. when i could be a doctor or even an orderly so yeah. you know like that was a bad situation i also had a situation where uh a co-worker called me that <laughs> This, she wasn't too bright. She thought she was texting somebody else oh and, boy. and texted me because I wouldn't I wouldn't engage with her offset. And she she was trying to say that I was I was being an uppity nigger. And this is this a white girl. Uppity. Yeah. Uppity nigger. So. OK. Two examples. Uh, her name is April Dawn. So if you ever come across her work, just thumbs down on it. She's racist. Um, so like these are two examples and both examples. I was like, nah, I'm not working with you. Mm -hmm. Can't can't work with you, can't work with the company. And that's actually led to uh, Jasmine and I, we do actual presentations. We got to pr present at Exotica. We've presented Ooh, at um, Eroticon in the UK. Mm -hmm. And we actually got to speak at the University of Puerto Rico this year. Okay. Well, last year on uh, racism in adult entertainment and how we can change that. And we mm -hmm. go all the way back to the history of, you know, Americans' first pop culture was minstrel, minstrelsy. Okay. You know, whether it be music or, or they used to have traveling bands with people in blackface and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, you know. So you look at the books like Mandingo or all these other books yeah, where black people are, Mandingo. everybody, where black folk are sexualized, right. sexually abused mm -hmm. by, Drum. by masters and mistresses and things like that. So I think a lot of times in porn now, that same kind of uh, uh, sick mentality of thinking that somehow we're here to service. Service, right. Yeah, right. It's, it's still uh, permeated a lot in porn, so we go out there and talk about how to change it, mm -hmm. what, what we can do to change our own images, and then what uh, people who want to be our allies can do mm -hmm. to actually change it on their side as well. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the stigmas um, that I came across is that people automatically assume that those that are in the sex industry are these sex crazed maniacs and then all you guys you just have lots of sex and then you're pulling you're having sex all the time is that is that true or is, does it vary as well like you have those I mean, that you definitely have some people who are uh, i guess what's the word insatiable mm -hmm. you know but I wouldn't say that that's bad whether you're is raising his hand. whether you're whether you're a porn performer or that's in your in your personal life as as long as you're protected and safe and take care of yourself and don't mm -hmm. put yourself in a bad situation and more power to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also find people who are in the industry that might have a relationship with somebody and their only sex that they don't have with their partner is on camera. Okay. And they might have certain deals with their partner. Like, I don't do anal with anybody except my husband when mm -hmm. I'm not on camera, you know? So right. it varies from person to person. Okay. I mean, you also have adult entertainers, uh, women who might be married who only do lesbian scenes or whatever, they, they might only do solo performances. Mm -hmm. Jenna did that so, when she got So married. it can range. Oh. I said Jenna Jamison did that when she, when she got married. Mm -hmm. She yeah. would only do um, girl on girl scenes. Okay. So yeah, it varies because people say that a lot. They're like, oh no, they're just sex crazed and they just love to have lots of sex. It's like, no, that's not necessary. Now, do you find it that, because this is also a stigma, that there are people that are just uneducated and, you know, they're the derelicts of society? I'm like, I find that even with exotic dancers, that a lot of them are highly intelligent. A lot of them, I mean, some of them are doctors. Some of them, if you knew their day job, you'd be like, <laughs> wow, like, I'm shocked. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's, You'll get the range in that too. There are certain people who, who are uneducated, but this is a job that doesn't require you to have a college right. diploma, mm -hmm. kind of like police officer. Boom, bam, pow. Shots. Mm. Right. Shots. Dang, I felt that. Oh, that was the end of the camera. That was the <laughs> you know, I was like, man, he dropped the mic just now. Boop. Nah, I, I do think, um, I mean, you know, there's that, that thought now, you know, Every time people meet a stripper, like, are you stripping your way through college? Exactly, or right. Whatever. Like, so I, I think that that, that it's changing. Um, but it's also like, 
I know I know a lot of people in the adult entertainment industry who are activists in their own right, whether yeah. it be for gender equality or animal rights or human rights or like I, I know a lot of a lot of um, Caucasian performers who who have the hashtag Black Lives Matter up on their profile right now. So okay. you know I think that there are so many stigmas that get that get broken down, but I think it also just has to do with no matter what it is, people mm -hmm. want to put people in a box. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are a whole lot of people who aren't porn performers that aren't intelligent people. Exactly. There are people who are in CEOs positions of, of power. Right. CEOs. Yeah. That it was just handed down to them like, okay, well, daddy was the head of the company now, and daddy passing it on, and like that's the thing. That. You could be president. Right. To the chat. Anything over there? Um, they're going in on there. Um, they're really going with themselves. Uh, I've, uh, you guys got to ask some questions. I'm going to jack your name up, sir. I apologize. I think it's uh, Devario Johnson. Okay. Uh, got, um, Shout out. checking out at April Dawn. He said, yes, yeah, she does look uh, redneckish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jabari went ahead and said he wanted to do this since he was five. And we have uh, <laughs> Miss uh, Amy Beauty went in on him. They all having fun in there. But I, I do have a couple of questions. Okay. Right. Um, myth or not myth? Um, they were saying it's uh, um, for uh, an adult artist. Is it more scary or more dangerous to have sex outside of the industry than to have sex in, uh, uh, in the industry? How do you uh, 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 deal with that, that, that situation? Well, I don't engage very much outside of work, to be honest with you. Because most people are not showing up with their papers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not going to talent testing. Papers. You know, so I think that um, right now my body is, it's my, it's my brand. Right. You mm -hmm. know, so I'm not trying to take anything, uh, any kind of risks that are going to put my brand at risk mm. at the same time as well, you know. Um, I am selective anyway, though. You know, I, I definitely have had moments where I'm, Tempted. More, more, uh, you know, just in stages of life. You know, there was stages in my life where I was a lot more like, ah, whatever, let's get it in. You know, but as I've as I've matured, a woman kind of has to turn me on mentally before physical anyway. So I'm not just I'm not just jumping around anyway. So yes. and the women who usually are willing to turn you on mentally will will show up with some papers. Right. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying because <laughs> they want to make sure that they're safe too. So right, that's very right. important. Um, in the adult industry, the blue pill, is it that significant or is it just specific companies, specific uh, artists, I mean, uh, you know, uh, performers? I think people vary. Some people like Viagra, other people like Cialis, some people do the natural way, some people, you know, it all, it all depends. I mean, the industry isn't the same as it was where people remember you know, like the fluffer and all this kind of, kind of, you know, <laughs> some some of that, some of that was urban fo folklore, yeah. you know. Um, but I think with the invention of the blue pill and Cialis and all these other things, you do. Some people can. There's there's been cases where people have had bad experiences with them. Right. So because you can you can do too much as well. So mm. you know, I think it kind of depends on the performer and. What they're what they're willing to what they're willing to do to perform. Okay. Uh, did you bring your paddle? That's the question in the chat. Did you bring your paddle? I did not bring my paddle. Uh, he did. I got my hands though. So. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Hands always work. <laughs> there you go. Yes, um, indeed. He so the need. I, I, she didn't let me know ahead of time that she would be interested oh, in a paddle like, or she flogging. Told stuff I, I just thought you was gonna bring the toys. Truly. She told hella like I need him to bring everything. I, but I thought he was gonna bring a little bag of tricks or something. I really did. I'm like, you know, I'm like, bring, bring something out. Give me a little, give me a little taste, you know. Well, if, once once you had said that you were gonna use just the the suited picture because you didn't want to scare people no, away, a, I was like, oh no, let me. Be <laughs> My, my best behavior. I, no, I, I like, said I wanted to create a duality, so I did that one, you know, for the men, so they would feel comfortable, and then I did one for the ladies, so I, I kept balancing. Yeah, I'm like, you I know, did, some I men did. is like they might be a little intimidated. You got a 12 pack, you know. <laughs> some men be like, oh yeah, I'm not tuning in, but I'm glad to see there are all men that tune in. Thank yes, you. Yes, absolutely. We <laughs> brothers need to have the conversation absolutely. just as much as women do. Absolutely. Um, now, do you find it because you were talking about the Viagra? Do you find it? Anytime hard to be ready. I know for a man, that's kind of like, who, we're, we're always ready. But is it sometimes you're just like, I, you know, I'm, I'm not in the mood to have sex? I think that, that that happens for everybody. Okay. Um, but the thing is, when it comes to performing, 
it's different, I guess, like if it's if it's your normal day, it's your normal life and you're just like, you know, I'm, I'm chilling right now. You know, there, there are all kinds of factors, especially as people get older, stress, lack of sleep, mm -hmm. not treating your body right, not eating right. Mm -hmm. All of these things can affect men. You know, like we definitely when we're young and, and all of this, we have this mentality like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm be hard forever. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying <laughs> I, I could survive anything and my dick will always work. I might be in a coma, but I'm be hard as hell. Right. right? Men have that mentality, and if we don't, if you don't treat your body right, mm. your body won't treat you right. True, that so, is so true. Gosh. You know, I mean, they're they're the reason I think that people will go to pills instead of just taking care of their body is because there is when you're working, it's like right now. Oh, right. Now. Okay. In your personal life, you can always just say, you know what, baby, I'm tired, or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever the case is for you. Mm -hmm. So I think I think it kind of depends on the person, mm -hmm. but the more in tune with your body and the more you realize is the mind controls everything, mm -hmm. the better you'll be in regards to performance. OK, now, do you ever have a situation where what well, do you always get to pick whom you're going to have sex with or? No. OK, so what happens <laughs> when? you're not so maybe i say attracted to that being that has that ever occurred and it's like what do you how do you how do you get your mind ready when you just do you pop that blue pill and be like okay let me make you know get well, this money blue pill or not mm -hmm. um i don't always think that that's what you should use to mm -hmm. get yourself in the mood of course so personally i'm attracted to women i love women of all shapes and sizes okay. and i think that usually especially if i can have a conversation with the person beforehand mm -hmm. usually i'll find something that i'm attracted to and focus oh, that's on awesome. that that's awesome that's awesome how many people can do that i mean like the same thing when i do erotic touch massages mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm performing as well that's true and i'm that's not true. i'm i don't pop pills to do right, that's performances yeah. in that sense it's, it, I'd probably have a aneurysm by now if I did that you know so <laughs> it's uh I can't see word I, <laughs> you know what you know what scares the hell out of me is that they say like if you have a problem with one of those pills then they gotta like cut you or stick a needle in you it's to get the blood yeah, out. that's what they said, yeah, so to get the blood out. that scares the living bejesus out of me. I don't <laughs> want nothing to do with that. So <laughs> it's, more, it's more about, you know, try to make sure that you're able to focus, you're able to go someplace. And, and I usually tell, like, I, I, we do work with, with couples, we do work with single women, we do work with single men in regards to bettering their sex lives, whether mm. it be for their partner or just a better sex life for yourself in general. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things I think when I speak to men who, who might have an issue mm -hmm. is usually just lack of focus. You know, you're like, the older you get as a man and you got kids mm -hmm. and you got bills and you got responsibilities okay, like and you libido. got you got something to you got something to finish at work and this, mm -hmm. that and the other. And you might be like in it at that moment. And then all of a sudden you're like, fuck, I got to do those charts. You mm -hmm. know, what I mean? like, <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing can kill the mood more than that, yeah. you know, or just trying to find new things to spice up your relationship True. or to work within your relationship to just bring out new things uh, uh, we we speak about your body changes completely every seven years mm -hmm. That's so what they if say. you're if you're the same person sexually seven years from now or seven years ago mm. then you're doing something wrong yes absolutely you know you should be expanding even if you're trying things that you're like mm, not for me mm -hmm. at least you now know something that you don't like so now you can maybe try its opposite yeah. and see how you enjoy it <laughs> right you know so it's just like I, I look at it like your sex is a muscle mm -hmm. well i mean that's why male kegels female kegels exactly. all these things are important but also Yoni eggs ladies it's like um if you do the same workout every day if mm -hmm. all you do is push-ups every day your body gets used to it the human body is exactly. amazing exactly so you have to vary your workouts right. yes, just like exactly. you have to vary your sex life mm. I like so that. when i get to work with different different people like um like i i love shooting with different companies because they're gonna ask for something different like what I'll shoot for Scoreland or Plumper Pass or my own company is always going to be different. Mm -hmm. So it requires me to focus on something different. So you could say that there's basically education Absolutely. within the, the sex industry. I think I think good good porn to me. Mm -hmm. There's passion. You can see something between. You can see a chemistry between yes, the performers, that's, whether it be one or fifty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No matter what. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. There's some kind of chemistry between the yeah. people that are involved. And also at the same time, if you're watching it, there should be a little something that you're like, oh, I didn't think about trying that before. Uh. Or just something that gives you an idea that then mm -hmm. you, the, the viewer, will be like, hey, baby, you know what I'm saying? Take a look <laughs> at this. You down? Or I, you I could try it, you know what I mean? Like I, I think that that's when it that's when it's really, really good, amazing work, you know what I mean? All right. I'm like, well, on that note, I think we should show the video. Oh yeah, we got a little a little taste. I had to give you at least a little taste with that. No no paddles, but you want to do both back to back or one? No, just give him just give him the juicy fried one. Just first. one. All right, we're juicified. gonna pause for a second. We'll be right back. Yes. Juicified or what? I know some of you are probably like play that one more time, please. That's the that's the nice clean version for everybody. But sanctified and juicified comes from. Oh, uh, shout out to Pink Hefts. If anybody gets a chance, check out uh, Pink Hefts. So brother, he makes uh, all natural supplements for both men and women. The okay. pink hefts are for the women, the black hefts are for the men. Mm. All natural supplements, so you know some vitamins and some natural herbs and things like that to help get your body going. So all right, okay. Look also, at that old uh, natural, yes. So like that one was working with the fetish of body worship. Mm -hmm. Oh. So mm. that's where my company started. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to just go by King. My company was called Sensual Noir. Okay. The reason I use the E is Noir is black with the E is the feminine. So it's sensual to serve the feminine energy. See, I love some. Ooh. So that's where that's where the body worship comes in, and that's yes, where the absolutely. erotic massages come yeah. in. So then at parties they just started calling me they're like oh that's that's king king who king noir mm -hmm. so then it just kind of so then it just kind of like stuck that way mm -hmm. so sanctified and juicified is kind of like along the lines of what's done with the erotic touch massages okay so that would be a part of the erotic touch massage not that's one that's one of the that's one of the packages that one's called midas oh okay so there's pat there's levels to this thing absolutely Love some levels now. Uh, okay <laughs> Any questions in the chat after the, after the um, how'd you guys like that? I need to know some feedback, even though I already know that it was fantabulous. Well, you know, we got my man, Mr. Johnson, already say, you know, he's loving the show because he put uh, House of Cards on pause. So, you know, nice. it's had to be good. Thank you. Nice. Uh, he said, hashtag hot. Uh, and they really still conversing with each other. Uh, but I do have some more <laughs> questions. Uh, oh, okay. All right, go okay. right ahead. Don't play at all. <laughs> now, I also want to know from being on camera to just being in your house is it different having sex on camera than just you know regular well you know if you got a cameraman or woman with the camera all up in your tank you know that does kind of change <laughs> <laughs> change from from the regular the regular the house you know i i think that's like one thing that most people would not be so comfortable with you know, like that's one thing that the first time that you're in that situation when somebody's trying to get a real good shot mm -hmm, and they're like yeah. over your shoulder, you're like, Ch uh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, you get used to it. it. Personally, it doesn't bother me or whatever, but I think that's the part that take, makes it different. And also just, you know, in your personal life, especially if you're like, if you're with somebody and you're with them for a long time and, and y'all know each other's ins and outs, you know, you have a, a different kind of communication mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're when you're on set 
you're not gonna be having sex cracking jokes. But if you're with your partner and y'all love each other and y'all been around forever and y'all just know each other, you're more likely to have that kind of interaction. You know, which is one thing that also we're trying to shift the paradigm with in regards to adult entertainment because a lot of times it is to me so some of the storylines and some of the communications between people are so ridiculous that nobody relates to them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it, to me, it's important that a person can look at a scene like, it might be beautiful, it might be amazing, but that person can still be like, I wanna try this, mm -hmm. I wanna do this. Mm -hmm. And if it's like shot on, you know, a million dollar set, and it takes place in outer space, you right. might be like, I, I don't think right. I'm gonna do that in my living room, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So there, there, there are other things that you can do where it's like, one of our scenes, we show how you can just use regular household items as sex furniture. Mm. You know, like the different positions that you could use on your couch or your table or on the door. Is a beautiful thing. You know, so just something like that, I think, goes a long way because you want you want your viewership and the people who who watch to be connected to what they're saying because mm -hmm. you know we want the people who watch it to be experiencing their own sexual scenario on the other side of the screen true and that's what i can um say the the clips that you did send me i like i love the music i love the flow of it because you i found in, in a lot of porn that you watch it's just the same type of you know script you know big butt woman walk by somewhere and it's like oh <laughs> Or it's like, hey, you owe me some money, you know, I don't know how you can pay me. Like, ah, oh, bored to tears with that. I'm so over it. Like me, I love a good love making, you know, porn. Give me, give me some substance. I don't want to just hear it. Like that's, ah, oh. okay. But that's what I found about your film. Like I love, it had a flow to it and it like kind of drew you in. Well, I think um, one of the things that we do different at Royal Fetish Films is we have women behind the camera. Ah. We have women who write in some of our scenes and scenarios. Really? Obviously, you know, Jasmine is a co-owner, yes. so she's also a producer. Mm -hmm. So, like for example, we've shot two scenes where I don't come at all. Okay. Which is usually most porn ends with a male having an orgasm. Right. So in that sense, most men who learn sex from porn think, well, once I bust a nut, this is over, it's mm. time to walk away. So, so many women are left unpleased and unsatisfied. Yes. So, another way to try and do that. Uh, we also, by having women who shoot some of the scenes, you'll get something different. You know, not all sex needs to be as bright as possible mm -hmm. and as close to penetration as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, there are other angles, like uh, we had Tyomi Morgan guest direct Collard in the Shadows. That's why, that's exactly what she wanted. She was like, I want to see Jasmine in a collar and I really like shadows. Mm. And in most porn, you don't have shadows. No. You, they're, they're not no, shot so in an artistic bright, way. Bright. So that's another thing because some people like to just see how the bodies move together, mm -hmm. mesh together, mm -hmm. instead of just seeing penetration, nice. which, which is fine and there's nothing wrong with it, mm -hmm. but that's why we try to bring a mix of everything because when you think about it, what turns you on what turns me on and everybody right. else in this room. We Can might have certain different. we might have certain things that are that are the same, mm -hmm. but they're gonna be different. So all porn should not be shot the same. True indeed. It's gotta have different different aspects to turn on different people in different ways. I'm sorry, I gotta say shout out to my sisters again. Yes, yes. Mm. I love Question. that, I love that. Um, Mr. John Snacks, uh, how do black males, actors, break into the industry? Seems like uh, we uh, see the same male black actors over and over again. Mm. Very good question. Yeah, um, good question. Now, I would say the way that if you want to break into it, start by making your own, put out your own stuff, try to get great photographers for pictures, get some good videographers, or even if you yourself have a good camera and you want to shoot POV or something like that, you know, um, right now is the best time for getting your own content out there. And if you do, if you if you get enough of a following, they'll they'll start knocking on your door. They'll start calling you for scenes. Um, I think the reason that there is such a limit when it comes to black actors is because I mean, there people are are afraid of us on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. um, IR, which is interracial, mm -hmm. the category, which is 
primarily, not even primarily, it's pretty much black male, white woman. Right. You know, not black woman, right. Asian man, or it's, mm -hmm. it's not broken up that way because it does go back to what I was speaking about earlier with the, uh, you know, the Mandingo mm -hmm. complex that, mm -hmm. that a lot of uh, white men have in this world. Sure. So they usually look for black men who look a certain way that fit their particular, their, really it's their fantasy. Mm, okay. So just as we range in, in shade and complexion, they, they specifically usually want a certain kind of look. Mm. Then on top of that, you know, it, like I said, it's a, it's, a small, it's a small world, you know, and there are a lot of people who try to get into it and, and can't perform or just like any other job, maybe it winds up not being for them. They might shoot a couple scenes and be like, ah, yeah. you know, and then also other companies have contract stars. You know, certain people might be contracted by one company to shoot X amount of scenes mm -hmm. or somebody does really, really well. And they're like, why mess up a good thing? You know? Right. True. True. Any more questions over there? Um, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to be nice. I'll tell you, I tell you how it's going to be nice. <laughs> Uh, I'm definitely going to uh, keep my promise. Um, have you ran across uh, an actress that was just like, I want this one again, or I want to work with this young lady again? Yes, all of them. I'm um, going to the, say. Other than the, the, the ones. There, there are some no, women. I mean, other than the ones that I've had horrible experiences with. Right. You know, and, and I pretty much named the one person I had a horrible experience with. I've, I've had the real good fortune of working with some amazingly talented in and out of the bedroom performers mm. right. you know and working with some people who when i was younger i looked up to them or i was like oh man one of these days you know yeah. what i mean so like I've, I've had the opportunity to do a lot of work with sarah j and angelina castro who are like real big names in the industry and then at the same time i've gotten to work with you know my own partner so, you know, I always want Jasmine. Like, it's, that's, yeah, never gonna, that's never going to change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also, you know, uh, I've gotten to work with, like, uh, Katie Catherine and a lot of other people who I didn't know before. And then we have really good chemistry. So I think that that's, like, most of the people I've worked with, I've shot more than one scene with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as far as connection is concerned, when you do go to do a scene do you get to meet the person ahead of time do you guys get to connect at all was it just like you're going to be with such and so this date and then you guys show up and then you some sometimes you you meet that person like when you show up for work in the morning really so i mean i'm i'm the kind of person or any way i'm just going to speak mm -hmm. say hi my name is what's your name how's your day going so far? <laughs> that's what i'm about to like, say like how do you just be like hi how you doing and it's like boom scene it's like you don't you don't ever get to kind of like warm up there's no introduction i mean besides I mean, you, like a you do get get a little introduction a i little mean bit. sometimes but i mean also sometimes you will get an email or or speak to the company ahead of time and they'll say you're going to be working with with this actress or whatever and then sometimes you might be like oh i know her already that's awesome okay oh wow that, that would be like to me that'd be so like interesting for me I mean, that's kind of for me that's part of a turn on too really you know, like I, I like i like the like we're gonna get to know each we like we have no choice we're gonna know each other physically right. so then to me it's also like um how are we even gonna mesh like where's the chemistry gonna come from okay and so you like the mystery of it yeah, like that's, the mystery it's there's so many different and then also there are other people who maybe it's from my company or for mm -hmm. their company who reach out like hey i've seen some of your work i would like to work with you if if you're open to it or whatever and then okay. you might start talking to that person like oh what are you into this is what this is what i'm into this da -da -da -da. and it'll be something that actually builds into like oh i can't wait so we right so we turn them cameras on like it's, it's about to go down so yeah I, I feel like that would be so difficult for me it's like hey it's such and so tomorrow and i'm like hi you know i would i, I it would take everything in me trying to get in that mindset because i'm the type of person i really got to build like something up with you I, i'm not the type of person i can just be like oh you know ooh, he looks good like mm, i'm ready i'm like i, I mm -mm. well i, I think all that's all types of sage and 
That's yeah. the, that's where it would come down to you being in control of what you shoot. Mm, you know, I think right. I think a lot of times people think, well, if I get in this industry, they're going to make me do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. There's nothing anyone's going to make you do. Okay. You have the decision to do it. So if you only want to work with people in that capacity, you know, maybe some companies won't work with you. Mm -hmm. But so what? You're still doing what it is that you want to do. You know, like me personally, they all the companies now, hopefully they understand, like I'm not going to do anything that's degrading. Mm -hmm. okay. So those certain companies, they know better than, than to contact me. Mm -hmm. So it, it's always kind of like with, with anything, you know, I, I think, you know, being that I came into this through music, I kind of kept my, my MC mentality where it's like, okay. I don't make music that's degrading to people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to do that in another profession either. You know, so I, I kind of like, I keep, who I am is who I am. That's, that's Regardless great. Regardless of, of how I express myself, mm -hmm. I'm still going to stay true to who I am. That's awesome. I love that. Because so many people, like, especially in this industry, I can see it changing you, your whole being, especially if you're not really ready for everything that it entails. Do you find I mean, it, it's, that it's there's possible, some people yeah. that are like, <laughs> it's, I got in, oh my God, I got to get out of here. Like, has there ever been like a, I don't want to say hit and run. That'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> it's, it's possible. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, some sometimes people don't understand the 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 ramifications of of any path that they choose. True. You know, I like mm -hmm. you know, I I don't think, and 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 I I just pull from different places because I think people think porn somehow exists in this vacuum that exists outside of regular life. Mm -hmm. You know, or or other industries and professions. You know, like. Uh, some people, they, it's cool, it's great, mm -hmm. until they realize, like, oh, shit, people I know are going to see my porn. Right. Like, it's not only going to be strangers. And it's right. like, why would you, you think everyone you know doesn't look at porn? Exactly. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, <laughs> so, we are looking. And, it's, and especially now, because it's not like back in the day where you actually had to go somewhere and buy it. Mm. Now you just turn on your computer and you could go to, Search. you know. X videos, a porn hub or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if you and if <laughs> and if you got any kind of any kind of traction on one of your videos, you might wind up on the front page. Mm -hmm. And then Bam. I know, I know that that's happened to me a few times. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, what, what is that like though? Because I, I, I know a lot of people, even people that hit me up and they're like, I know this brother. You know, and they were yeah. like, I didn't know that he did this also. Like most people were spoke, speaking about your music. Mm -hmm. What was that like when people say Brother, because I know <laughs> if I don't know what to say to you, like, um, I saw you, I think, you know. I definitely get people like, I'm not sure it was you, <laughs> but it's like, yo, I got my name right here, so. <laughs> so That's funny. But it's like, um, I mean, it's, it's cool because I feel like, all right, so when sisters do it, it's definitely like. The worst thing in the world, right? Nah, I, I mean. People definitely have this double standard mm -hmm. when it when it comes to women with sex in general. Yes, you know, indeed. Because, and it's because most men still view women as property yes. instead of as human beings. Mm. So, you know, with with me, I'll get it more like, "Yo, that's what's good." Like, right. yeah, <laughs> you know. And then right. and then, um, you know, women I know who 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 come across it, they'll usually be like. At first, I felt like, why are you doing this? Or da 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 da. Really? But then now I'm like, I see what you're doing. And because I know, I know a lot of, a, a lot of sisters who, who are like, they think of porn as something demeaning. True. So yeah. then when they see like we're not doing that, then they're yeah. like, oh, that's what's up. Yeah. You know, or, and, and I also find it real interesting. Like, I think it's cool because like now a lot of my, my, my brothers who, who've checked out my work, or whatever, whether they wanted to or not, or just came across it, they're willing to now hit me up and be like, y'all got a question for you. Right. Because we do so much besides just the porn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We do a lot of, um, we do fetish training and kink counseling and right. parties and oh, all this other stuff. Yeah. So we do get a lot of questions from people, like even some, some of my folk who might not want to admit it openly that they've right. seen it, right. they'll hit me up and be like, Yo, sure, I want to know how to do that. Right. You know what I mean? And, and I think that that's beautiful because it's like people are embracing what we're doing and, and do see that there's, there's a need for it. Because I think that having a healthy sex life mm -hmm. is part of having an overall healthy life. Well, I, t I tell people that sex is, is medicinal. Absolutely. Okay? You know, it's, it's medicine 
for your mind, your body, your spirit. You know, I mean, it is. I mean, Facts. everyone knows it's a game changer. It's an attitude changer. It's a day changer. Mm -hmm. You know, a night changer. Whatever type of weather changer. You know, so it's uh, <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Like people just, just gotta be free. Gotta be free. Mm -hmm. gotta be open. All right. Anything else over there? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. As far as finances, I'm talking to me. Like I'm being. I'm really. You, 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 you're trying to get it in. Roll them out, out, brother. Right you know I'm being. He said I'm behaving the heck out. <laughs> no. He even said heck. I can't believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> people want to know as far as finances. Uh, do porn stars get paid more or less than, let's say, your regular actor or actress? Shit, if you Brad Pitt, you're making more money than everybody, wow. right? So I, I don't think there's anybody who's getting a million dollars per film or per scene. Right. Uh, I can't tell you what a extra or a SAG actor makes just for a basic, uh, yeah. like, because we, we're performing on a different kind of time scale and there's different things that's required of you. Um, I would think, from what I see, when I see Hollywood movies and contracts, they, they seem to get like millions of dollars. So I don't, mm. I don't know anybody that's getting millions of dollars to, to shoot a porn scene. Yeah. Now what they might be making off their merchandising, like I think somebody brought up Jenna Jameson earlier. Yeah, I, know, I know Jenna Jameson makes a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> so like if you're, if you're somebody who's smart enough to control your brand, have your products and things like that, then yeah, you can make a lot of money. But Hollywood movies and things like that are still mainstream. So you're gonna make more money with a mainstream film. Right. Another question. How uh, does your family feel about you being in the industry? Well, I'm, I'm lucky enough. My, my mother actually is a health edu Well, she was a health educator and a health activist. So she was responsible for working with like almost all the school nurses in New Jersey to have sex ed programs. OK. So she loves the sex ed aspect of what we do and all of that. And in regards to the porn, she's not out there watching it. So right. she's like, do you just be safe? You know what I mean? Oh, but so like in great. regards to the sex, the sex ed aspect of what we do, she loves it because, you know, she's done work with like Patterson Healthy Heart and mm -hmm. Asthma Project in New York and different different AIDS activist programs. So really important to, oh, to keep awesome. that keep that health tradition going, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So the family is, is supportive for yes. the most part. As long as mom is happy though, you really you that's know That's my everybody. family. That's exactly, <laughs> that's what I was about to say. Listen, you know, mom happy, everybody's happy. So yep. what else you got rapid fire over there? Me, I, they uh, got theirs out. Um, do you have a favorite position? Mm. I don't like to choose just one. It depends on the situation and who I'm with. All right, does it matter, like, you know, big butt, little butt, heavy chested, small chest? Does it vary? About what, like, if I have a type? Yeah. My type is a confident woman. Mm -hmm. my, all, all my real type, like, obviously there's things that I find attractive. Uh, physically, I'm, I'm really into eyes and ass. I like, I like really deep, like... Keep sultry, stuff, sultry so eyes, mm -hmm. and then you know, like the crevice of the booty. The, oh, the crevice! <laughs> the crevice, like the, the right, the crevice that. is yeah. amazing. Like yeah. if, really? the, if the crevice, if the crevice is right, the crevice. If okay. the crevice is right, and I mean, I personally, I, I like, I like that to be natural. I'm not, a, I'm okay, not a big I'll, fan for like shots and things like that. Artificial. Body part. Now, have you worked with some that had? I have. I mean, I'm not. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, just as long as you are safe with it like no, everything else. No, what I was going to say is that I, um, men that I've spoken to will say to me they would rather a woman that was real than some of these artificial parts because they don't really feel as good as the real deal. I mean, some things look really good. Right. You know, um, <laughs> it also depends on, I guess, who, who their doctor was. You know uh -huh. what I mean? That's what I'm about to say because yeah. they said it very dependent upon what type of material. Because I have definitely worked with some actresses who had like fake breasts and, and they fooled me mm. and I was like mm. okay okay well, or they or they look or even if they look fake like the feel was still like mm -hmm. was still real so yeah because it's all about the material you gotta have that good doctor yeah that good. right that, that means good. a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna get to that Mr. Johnson uh, another question Mr. Um, Johnson uh, he asked a good question I like that I got, he about to start you. up when you start up your business bro <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to hear about all your success stories man exactly all right, from Jabari, he says, now, in order to um, work in this business, do you have to have a perfect body or just a passion or a desire? Passion and desire. Um, 
You don't have to have, I think every single person and every single performer has something that people gravitate towards. So I don't know, maybe you got really good hands and then you're gonna do videos where you're fingering somebody. Mm. You know, like that's, that's, there's so many niches when it comes to erotic entertainment and when it comes to film, because mm -hmm. not just on the triple X hardcore side of things, you also have the fetish market. In the fetish scene, you don't even have to have sex on film. Mm, and okay. you could still make money in, in the fetish world as well. So, you know, don't, don't think about what limits you. Think about what, what enhances you. You know, mm. like what, what's, what's the part of you that you want to bring to the business that, that you feel people will benefit from, from watching and it'll turn them on. Alright. Now like to this that. wonderful question here. I like this. Shout out to Mr. Johnson, man. He <laughs> said, uh, if a female comic book su superhero had to save you from a near-death experience, which one would it be? Holy sh... That's, what I mean. That's <laughs> an awesome question. I love that question. Wow, okay. <laughs> I mean, a female comic book... I mean, I've always been partial to Storm. Mm. Just because, like, that's like... Is it month, an accident? I mean, she controls. That's the earth right there. Yes, indeed. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. <laughs> she do everything. Oh, like, yeah. I, I think I would say Storm, and also, I mean, personally, I was just mad that Angela Bassett never played Storm in none of the movies. Ooh, she would have. Because I feel been like Angela Ooh. Bassett would have killed that Ooh. role. And Angela Bassett is supposed to play every strong black woman in history, That's whether true. whether fictional or in real life. So they messed up on I think that her one. Her arms kills her. To Yo, be honest with you. Her arms the fact are, that she's so muscular. Her arms really are gorgeous. Does, yeah, exactly. They are, but the fact that like her as a arms superhero, are more, she's supposed to be strong. Her arms are more cut than like men. So it does. That's men's fault they for not mean. working on the arms. <laughs> yeah. Angela Bassett is awesome. Man. I, I, love I love her. She is gorgeous. Bassett. She is who I aspire to be. I mean, I, I messed with her until she did that surrogacy thing, and I was like, all right, I'm going to fall back a little bit. I don't bit. even know about that. So I was like, yeah. well, she want to have a baby, but I'm going to put that baby in your stomach. I don't want to carry it. I, I don't blame stomach. her. You see her body is snatched <laughs> to the gold? Well, some push-ups and sit Yo, that's some, that's some, like, I mean, that's yeah. some, if you got it, <laughs> if you got it, I guess that's what, that's what, that's what you do. Um, well, um, before we go, we're going to show you guys the last clip. We'll give you something a little bit more juicy -o. You know, so. Oh, this is actually free. You can go onto YouTube and watch the entire scene. It's called Electric Orgasm. This was from backstage at the Ebony uh, Erotic Affair in uh, in Chicago. So this is this is just us having a good time with uh, with an electric flogger and a doxy massaging wand. Mm. To the clip, please. Yeah.
So anyone want to be flogged now? <laughs> Y'all have to excuse me because you know when you don't really see me in rare form, but there is a rare form to sin of men, definitely. Mm. So on that note, ending it. I know, I'm gonna come back with the floggers. I got you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, I just want to end by asking you. So, what was your inspiration? Or who was your inspiration? You, you, know, you talked about it earlier, saying that you were inspired by certain people. Any men in particular that inspired you? Was it mostly women in the porn industry? I wouldn't say that there was anybody in particular that inspired me, like from a young age. In it, I was mm -hmm. just always, like, I've been, I guess better word for it. I've always been kinky. I've always been a freak, like as far back as I can remember. Okay. Like I was I was into candle wax and handcuffs before I knew the word what the word fetish meant. Wow, okay. You know, so it's just kinda like an evolution. But within the last few years as I've worked in this industry, mm -hmm. you know, I've definitely learned a lot. Um working with Sarah J, Angelina Castro, Lance Hart, um, Kendra Lust is the uh I'm on her agency, so okay. just kind of like paying attention. Like she won MILF Performer of the Year at AVNs this wow, year. So okay. learning learning from them in regards to the business has been extremely inspiring because, okay. you know, the the best way to be yourself basically and mm -hmm. put that out there in a way because to me and that's that's the advice i was giving uh, the gentleman earlier it's like find out what it is about you mm -hmm. like what are your partners like about you mm. you know what do you what do you <laughs> like about yourself yeah. and then how to how to package that in a way and and basically bring it to people in, in a sexual art form so you know people who have been successful in this business to mm -hmm. me that it's inspiring to see it happen that's awesome. That's awesome. <sighs> okay, so tell us where we, they can, well, tell everyone where they can reach you, where they see your videos, yes, how they can yes. contact you, because I'm sure everyone's going to be like, I need this brother's <laughs> services. Well, definitely go to royalfetishxxx.com. That's for all of our films, ranging from hardcore to fetish, kink, passionate, some wild stuff on there, too. It's, it's a good uh -oh. time. Definitely check it out. Not suitable for work, though, of course, unless you... A porn person like me <laughs> but <laughs> nah it's um definitely check out our site we run the site ourselves uh definitely go to jetsettingjasmine.com if you're interested in a fantasy flight party fetish training or an erotic touch experience and then uh at king noir k-i-n-g-n-o-i-r-e on all forms of social media and I answer all questions on my own, so feel free to t tweet me or hit me on Facebook or Instagram, whatever. Perfection. I hope you guys had your pins right. But then again, if you did, you can always go back and watch the show all over again. Yes, yes. Truth. Any last words over there? I may have a question, but we could get out. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I I'm down to answer. You, you been, you've been, holding, you've been holding hold the questions time. Back. I didn't want to hold his no, time. I'm going to ask him off. No, I'm going to ask him off. You said one more question. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying because like I know me, me personally. I got you. I would have an issue doing a guy, guy, girl scene. Mm -hmm. Would you have an issue with that? I've, I've done, I've done a, a, a guy, guy, girl scene before. Now it wasn't where like I'm, I mean, no disrespect, but it's just like she's down her knees and she giving both your head and y'all bumping dicks. Like that's <laughs> you know that you know, yeah. I, it's it's funny because the the scene that that I shot it was actually one of my first scenes for a major company and you know it's not something that i've really done in my in my personal life so i was just kind of like all right you know I'll, I'm, I'm willing to try it see how it go and he was the same way as me he's just like yo just, just don't just, just don't be bumping into me bro. <laughs> and i was and i was like her like we good but you know what i'm saying I, I think that especially in in porn you know a lot of porn is created by men who really don't like women. Thank you. Um, yeah. they, they, might, they might be attracted to women, they might have sex with women, mm. but they don't like women. Thank they you. have a hatred for women. Yes. So they've made it seem that a uh, girl, girl, guy, threesome, or woman, woman, man is what we prefer to say, even though like terminology is different, um, is okay because you know, it's really, most porn is about the man's pleasure. Mm. 
So it's like if you've, if you've ever been in a threesome in real life, you know, there's a whole lot of times if you're smart, you just sit back and watch mm -hmm. and, in, and enjoy what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Right. But porn <laughs> makes the man the focus of all things, even though in most porn, you barely ever see a man's face. Right. And women are actually now becoming more and more the purchases of porn. So they want to see a man's face. Mm -hmm. They might have fantasies of, of two guys with them or more guys. And that's fine. Whatever it is, is fine. It's just to me, I shoot things that personally I'm comfortable with, mm -hmm. with doing because I don't want to do anything fake on screen. Mm, yes. But like the scene itself, it actually turned out to be really great. And it was like one of the first times I've, I've ever been with a woman and done actual like a DP scene and all that. And it was cool by me. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Was that all your questions? I asked him when we get off because I was real nice. I'm about to get unnice. So oh, jeez, yes, we don't want him to get. <laughs> we don't want him to get so unnice. I'm, I, I'm so proud of him, guys. He it's it's good, you know. Per personally, I, I don't mind because, like, I think that that one of the things that we work that we work to do with our company is to just dispel a lot of notions. Mm. You know, I think that right now we're we're living in a world where people are so afraid of anything of that's anything. different yeah anything that steps outside their box yeah and i think especially with men right now there are a lot of men who are angry because women are not only gaining ground but passing a lot of them mm -hmm. you can't just be a dumb man and get ahead of women anymore mm -hmm. because there are a lot of intelligent and qualified women who deserve better positions in the workforce and 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 just in life in general <laughs> not because of their gender, but because they actually are qualified. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, when it comes to now, there's like this whole people speak of, like, let's say, for example, in that, in that kind of scenario with, with, a, with a male, male, female threesome, people will say like, oh my God, like if you accidentally touched, then that means you're gay. Like, it doesn't work that way. Right. You know, so in, in that kind of scenario, to me, it just shows like also, other people are gaining ground on what is considered, you know, the straight male, really straight white male. Mm. So you see people who are transgender getting more rights, the LGBT community in general getting more rights. Mm -hmm. And then it scares people from anything. And you'll have all these crazy scenarios and ideas and things like that. So if those are what your questions were in regards to not being nice, I welcome all questions. Mm -hmm. Cause we don't, we don't shy away from anything. Yeah. Absolutely. So you 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 gonna do it or you gonna leave it leave, leave alone? I'm gonna let your show be a nice PG thirteen. <laughs> this is a play, listen, this, this is not about we be beyond. PG. We already went past the PG thirteen. Yeah, exactly. No, he just with it. He I'm wants good. to I'm use good. all types of terminology. I have an issue. I'm good. I'm good. Nah, you good, man. I appreciate y'all having me on. Oh, I appreciate you responding so very quickly. It's it's you know sometimes it's so difficult to get our people to come and support you know each other. But you he immediately I asked him like brother you know how can we build? I'd love you to be on my show. And he was like sure no problem boom and it was like boom 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 within that little bit of time. So that's peace definitely and Check I, and I appreciate first, you I so much. I appreciate that. Absolutely, <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I got away with but, that one. What? <laughs> See, he just got in the backyard over there. But um, I'm like, kings and queens, I, I hope that you, well, not hope, because hope breathes out. I'm like, um, I know that you enjoyed this show because it was awesome sauce. And um, of course, if you missed any portion of it, you could always go back and look at it where? www.truevibetv.com. Also, the link will be available very shortly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And sister queens, don't forget to hit your sister up for the art of seduction. Be empowered, be confident, be your true divine feminine. Until next time, love you guys always. Peace, love, and light. Peace. <laughs>